What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and for you today I've got my review and tutorial of Motion VFX M Film Look plugin. I want to find out what it is, how it works and whether it's any good. Now roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to this software plus any other relevant videos are popped in the description box below. And of course, this is not sponsored content, so if you do enjoy this and you find it helpful, definitely get yourself subscribed and give me a like. So what is M-Film Look? So Motion VFX M-Film Look is an all-in-one color grading plugin with built-in LUT, white balance, exposure controls, off-screen flare, lens distortion, film grain, vignette controls, and loads more. It's really designed for getting a filmic style of color grading, so don't be expecting that kind of super accurate, true-to-life Rec. 709 kind of look. This is all about moody colors, film grain, lens flares, and all that kind of stuff. The first thing I noticed was that the interface of this plugin was really nice. Let me give you a little guided tour right now. In Final Cut now, and I'm going to start, of course, by dragging an instance of M Film Look onto our clip. And you can see the interface is really nice. We have on the left hand side here a sidebar of all the different effects you can add. Or if you prefer to do it the traditional way, you can just look at it in your inspector on the right hand side. At the very top of the plugin, you can see the first thing we come to is the M Film Look presets, and there are some pretty interesting ones. However, beware, there does tend to be quite a lot of lens flare, quite a lot of blur, quite a lot of distortion, that kind of thing. So these are often good if you want a good starting point. What I've been doing is loading them up, trying them out, and if necessary, dialing back any kind of effect that's too extreme. Another cool thing is this box here, which says show clipping. And this is in a way a little bit like zebras. It shows you any point in your footage where it's getting too bright or too dark. Next, we have the convert to Rec. 709 options, which give you profiles for different cameras, which add a contrast curve and a color space. Now you'll find that there are a few different versions of conversion LUT per log gamma. And I'm guessing this is just to give you a few different options depending on how you've exposed your footage. For my Sony S-Log2 footage, the only version that I found that works was the version three. Uh, version one and two did strange things to my footage. Next we have white balance, and this is a really simple, very useful tool. Simply use the color dropper tool and select sort of a neutral gray color in your scene, preferably from a gray card if you've done that. And the plugin will do its bit in trying to sort out your white balance and get it really perfect. Next we have levels, which are basically exposure tools, in which we have exposure, contrast, in black, in gamma, in white, out black, and out white. Now these exposure controls actually include an auto button, which is not something I would normally recommend using at all, but it can be a decent starting off point. And plus, you know when you're grading and something doesn't quite look right. Well, by hitting this, it can actually give you a prompt to kind of make you think, ah, yeah, that is what's, that's what's needed. Next we have basic adjustments where we can adjust our color temperature, our vibrance, which of course is different to saturation, and then our sharpness. Just a little note about the sharpening slider. Like so many other sharpening plugins, if you feel like your footage needs just a touch of sharpening, usually the tiniest amount is more than enough. Personally, I don't understand why plugin companies make these sharpening plugins where Normally the first zero to maybe three percent is useful sometimes, but anything past that looks like absolute shit. Why is that? Next we have off-screen flares, and these are very nice flares that go from sort of subtle to extreme. There are lots of presets, so you can really pick the one that suits your footage the most. They tend to be mostly in the vein of the anamorphic style flares, with that signature streak across the screen. Next we have the built-in lookup tables, and of course they come in lots of different flavors. You could, if you wanted to, just use this plugin for the lookup tables. The one thing to bear in mind is these lookup tables are designed for Rec. 709 footage, not for log. And of course you can import your own lookup tables. 
I will go into these in a bit more detail when we do a grading example. Next we have aberration, which can add very extreme examples of lens aberrations, such as a vignette style lens blur, and even a prism style splitting of the colours. To me this really draws my eye into the centre of the frame and really gives it a kind of telescopic look. Next we have the distortion tool, which essentially gives your footage pincushion distortion. Why would you want that? Well, it just simulates a very different style of lens than the one you were using, and also perhaps hints to a more vintage style. Next we have Lens Blur, which does exactly what you expect. It gives your footage a vignette style blur around the outside of the frame. I guess this is useful for stylistic decisions and drawing your eye to the centre of the frame. Next we have Grain, and I have to say, this, in my opinion, is one of the strongest effects built into this plugin. It's actually very tweakable, very subtle, and most of all, very believable. The real highlight of this effect is the Luma influence, which lets you tell the plugin how much noise you'd like according to how bright the footage is, which is one of the things that makes it so believable. You can push the noise into the shadows as much as you like, leave the bright areas looking really clean. And then we have Vignette, which I know is very standard, but it does exactly what it should do. And finally, we have Letterbox, which gives you, to be fair, about as many options as I've ever seen in a Letterbox style plugin. So now you're familiar with the interface, let me show you a few grading examples. I'm going to start by grading this clip, which was shot in Sony s 2. I'm going to do just a basic grade, and I'll show you how I went from this to this. No flares, no distortion, no bells and whistles, just a basic grade. Into Final Cut now, and I'm going to drop an instance of MFilm look onto an adjustment layer. First things first, I'm actually going to disable the on-screen control because I want to see the whole image, and I'm just going to use the controls on the right-hand side in our inspector. So let's add our conversion LUT, and you remember I said that the version 1 and 2 did strange things to my footage? Well, see for yourself. Of course I'm going to use the version 3 for this grade. Even though the white balance in our footage does look pretty good already, I'm going to make a small adjustment with the white balance tool. With the dropper tool, I'm going to select an area on her shirt, and here's the before and the after, and seeing them side by side, you can see how much more blue the first example was and how much this actually needed doing. Moving on, and next we have levels, and the first thing I'm going to do is bring down the contrast just a little bit just because it seems like there's a little too much and I want to preserve highlight and shadow detail. Next, I'm going to adjust the in gamma and if you need to make exposure adjustments, my advice is don't use the exposure slider, use the in gamma slider. It just does it in a more pleasing way. I just made a few more tweaks to get things right and there's no formula here, it's really just a feel thing. Next, we have the basic adjustments and the only things I'm gonna do here is just dip the vibrance and saturation down by just a hair. And the reason I'm doing that is because it already looks fairly saturated and I know that I'm probably gonna add a lookup table which will only add more. Next we have on-screen flare and I'm going to ignore it because this is not a cinematic style grade. And then of course we have lookup tables. There are some absolutely lovely built-in LUTs in this plugin. Obviously I can't show you all of them right now, but the one that really caught my eye for this grade was the brassy lookup table. I really like the way the skin tones look, I like the, the blues really pop and it's just a really clean looking lookup table. And what I like to do is start from 0% and just fade it in until it looks right. Again, it's a feel thing. Next, I'm going to show you the grain effect. I know it's strictly not necessary for a shot like this, but I couldn't resist. It's so good. So zooming into 400% so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. Straight away, I'm going to dial the intensity all the way up so we can just see what's happening with the grain. And my first tip straight off the bat is to dial the granularity all the way down because it has such a strange effect in your video and I can't imagine this being desirable in any way. When we add more colour noise you can see it's very believable. Personally I like a little less colour noise. Next we see how amazing the Luma Influence slider is. First I'm just going to reduce the size of the grain because I had it quite large to show you what's going on. Hopefully you can still see the effect of the Luma Influence slider. Dialed all the way back it's not fussy about where the grain goes, it just goes across the whole frame. But as we dial it in you'll notice there's more grain in the shadows and less in the highlight and brighter areas. Lastly, I'm just going to add a touch of vignette and the default settings are quite extreme so you might want to dial them back a little bit more. So there's our basic grade, we started with this and of course we ended up with this. So next let's do something a little bit more cinematic. Next I'm going to try grading this red 8k raw footage and show you how I went from this to this. 
Let's do it. Just so you know, I'm grading this red raw footage in Dragon Color 2 and Red Log Film. That's my favorite color space and gamma combo for red footage. So as before, I'm going to use the Rec.79 conversion. And of course, there are a few versions for Red Log. I actually liked version one the most, but it's a preference. Next, I did my white balance correction and I found this actually had a really nice effect. Before, I found it had a slightly greeny tint to the shadows and this kind of corrected it. It added that touch of magenta and just felt way more balanced afterwards. Next, I played with the levels and as before, it's a feel thing. This immediately looked not bright enough to me, so I reached for the in gamma slider and then realized it's raw. Why am I doing this? I can just adjust the ISO, which to me is always preferable. Next, I wanted to apply a really nice lookup table. So I scrolled through the whole list looking for the right one and bear in mind, I'm working with raw 8K footage, so this was quite a long process, hence why I sped up the footage. In the end, I really like the lookup table that's called Sprightly and I want a more dramatic look, so I've left it at 100%. Next with the basic adjustments and the only thing I felt I needed to do was just warm it up slightly. This looks like a really acrid place on a really hot day. I felt like it needed more warmth. Next I added a flare and I know this is not strictly necessary, but I figured we got the sun shining from camera right and I wondered how real I could make this flare look given that the camera might be going in and out of shadows. So I dialed back the intensity, I changed its position, changed the hue slightly and dialed up the flicker settings. And I'm not usually a big flare fan to be honest, but I really like this. Next, I added just a touch of aberration in the hope that this would actually accentuate the movement in this shot. Next, I added grain and very much like I did in the last example. I like subtle grain, not too much color noise and I definitely want to use all of that Luma influence slider. Looks beautiful. So there we go, that's how we went from this raw footage to this nicely graded footage. So I always like to be objective and give you both sides of the coin with these reviews. So now let's go through the pros and cons and we'll start with the cons. I couldn't help noticing that this plugin doesn't have curves and I like to use curves on almost every single grade I do. I like to sculpt my contrast curve rather than just accepting whatever contrast curve I'm given by the lookup table I'm using. Like this shot, for example, if I turn the curves off now, you can see the difference and then let's turn them back on. I know if this is just a personal preference thing, but I suppose you could just use the curves that are built into your editor. Something else I noticed is that the preset thumbnail images don't necessarily reflect the style of that preset as well as they could. I know this is something, this is really nitpicky, I know, but for me, I like a really fast workflow and that's the only reason I bring this up. The master exposure control doesn't work quite the way I'd like it to. It tends to affect my contrast curve in a way that I'm not expecting. And I suspect this is because it's positioned after our look at table. And that's the opposite of the way that I usually grade. As with the curves, you can just have an instance of color wheels before the M film look plug in but I really wish you could just move the different modules so it's in a different order in the chain of plugins. Finally, I would have liked to have seen built-in stylized LUTs for log footage rather than having to convert your log footage to Rec.709 and then applying another LUT on top of that. Again, this is just preference and not a big problem. Of course, you can just import your own lookup tables. So what about the pros? Well, I really love the way that the interface works on M-Film Look. It's so slick and so easy to use, I just can't fault it. I also love the presets you get. They do have quite a bit of sass. In fact, sometimes they can be even slightly over the top with things like lens distortion, flare and blur and that kind of stuff. But to be honest, it's nothing that you can't tame. I've got to say the array of features you get with M Film Look is impressive with the lovely film LUTs, the lens distortions, the flares and the excellent film grain effect. It's just really feature packed. I also wanted to mention the distortion tool, which is not only a cool effect for changing the style and look of the lens you're using, but also can be used to correct barrel distortion. The point is, I don't remember seeing many plugins that do this for video, but what I'd love to see is lens specific profiles. Can you imagine that? Like they have in Adobe Lightroom. The auto exposure and auto white balance features are really useful. They're not something I'd recommend to use all the time, but both great starting off points. So anyway, what about my opinion? Everything about M Film Look screams high quality. However, in my opinion, you need a soft, subtle and delicate touch to get the most out of it. 
I don't do reviews of products I don't like, so it's no surprise to hear that I really like M Film Look. The way I can see myself using M Film Look is to do my normal grade, as normal, and then add an instance of M Film Look just to add that filmic fairy dust that makes your videography look more like cinematography. Anyway, that's it. You can ask me questions about this software in the comments section below if you want to. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Of course, as always, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you.